You're welcome back. It's still the run-up, and we're glad to know that you're still there. The governor of Kaduna State, Nasir El Rufai, says the Naira redesign policy was initiated by a cabal around President Muhammad Buhari to cause chaos in the country and ultimately trigger a military takeover of government. Mr. El Rufai, who spoke during a live broadcast titled Let Us Stand Up Strongly for Democracy, Peace and National Unity, said some politicians who lost presidential and gubernatorial primaries are behind the policy. He said the plan was to cause scarcity of Naira notes coupled with the shortage of fuel, which may lead to serious protests and military interruption of the nation's democracy. He added that those behind the new policy also hoped that the policy would compel the government to postpone elections resulting in the enthronement of an interim government taking over. Also, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabi Amila, described the pronouncement by the President Muhammad Buhari on the Naira policy as a disregard of the rule of law because it is short of the order of the Supreme Court. Now, we also have uh, Governor Ganduje, who is also saying that this will truncate democracy and so many other uh, governors who have joined uh, in the suit against the federal government saying that this policy must be stopped. Now, we're just looking at LRFI statements and the, the interest behind what the governors are doing. LRFI said the policy was not conceived with the best of intentions and is aimed at stopping the All Progressive Congress presidential candidate Bola Tinubu from emerging president. Remember that Tinubu himself had said that this policy was targeted at him. Now, Tinubu, uh, the governor of Kaduna State, Nasir LRFI, has asked residents of the state to continue to accept the old 500 Naira and 1,000 Naira notes as legal tender. Uh, we hoped to be joined by a legal professional, but um, until that is done or until he is able to join us, we're still here in the house, just trying to ask ourselves what is really going on. <laughs> now, a few days mm -hmm. ago, uh, one of the spokespersons for the APP Presidential Campaign Council, Femi, Femi Fani Coyote, uh, made a statement that there's a plan, there's a coup d'etat that uh, is being planned by the opposition, blah, blah, blah. And he was invited by the DSS. And after the grilling of this man, he came out and said he regretted it. <laughs> I kind of liked the fact that it happened that way. A man of that standing being invited and finding his feet backwards and saying that he made a mistake. And I'm wondering why some other people are still getting away with it. Now, what I would have loved to ask the, the learned gentleman who uh, we are hoping will join us before the end of the show is what is the difference between the statement that was made by Fanny Coyote and that of Nasir El Rufai, even though they say that what the president said was in contravention of what the Supreme Court had, um, I wouldn't want to say ruled, because <laughs> even before the program, when we were talking with you, you said no. there's been no the pronouncement. Still being <clears throat> yes. Yeah, but I think the Supreme Court essentially has asked that uh, the status quo be made. That is, they should keep ex using the old notes mm. uh, until the determination of the, of, of the case before it, which means the old notes will still be legal tender. Um, but you see, for me, um, there's huge suffering across the land. Mm. Tensions are high, elections are close by, and so whatever anyone would say, especially public office holders or those who are prominent or have prominent positions, I think has to be very guarded. Mm -hmm. um, you asked what the difference was between what Femi Fani Kayode said and what Nasir Erufai has said. Erufai says there's a cabal. Mm. He didn't name anyone. Says there's a cabal around the president, and they have this ambition to cause chaos to the point where they will be, they will instigate uh, an unconstitutional mm. order, either an interim government or uh, an unconstitutional change, change of, 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 uh, of power. Now, he is saying, in my understanding, yeah. what he thinks is the intention of this so-called cabal. Whereas Femi Fani Kayode categorically said, mentioned a particular day and said some people went and held meetings with mm. generals. 
Okay. You see, that's a very categorical statement. Okay. And, and uh, if you would say something like that publicly, you must be able to defend it. So I think this would be the two major, uh, the two major differences, you know, in what both personalities said. Um, but having said that, uh, yeah. okay. I think it's a very, very uh, volatile situation. Yeah. And whatever anyone is saying, uh, of course, people should be free to, to express their opinion. Okay. But I think there should be, it should be done with a high sense of responsibility. Okay. Well, we understand that uh, um, Barrister Okeoye Sarafa Omoyele has joined us. He's a barrister and solicitor of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. Good morning and welcome to the program, Barrister. <laughs> Your audio seems to be breaking. I, I don't know if you're using a, an earpiece or something. Okay. Thank you for joining us. Uh, okay. The earpiece. Okay. Now, we're looking at the Naira redesign. The um, Supreme Court's pronouncement that status quo should be maintained. The pronouncements by the uh, president, Muhammad Buhari, uh, you're kind of like meeting the Supreme Court and the CBN halfway or in the middle. And then what the uh, governors are saying, especially like Governor Nasir El Rufai is saying about uh, continuing to use the um, old Naira nodes and the plan by some people to scuttle the government and then install an interim government and all that. So before you joined us, I was just asking my colleague, what is really the difference between what Governor Nasir El Rufai has said and what Fanny Kayode, for instance, also said that was labeled as treasonable, maybe, and made the DSS to invite him for, uh, for questioning. Now, what is the weight and implication of what Nasir El Rufai said? Because to some people, it seems as if there's a parallel government now. The federal government or the president made a pronouncement, whether right or wrong, but he has also made his own pronouncements, whether right or wrong. Tell us what are the implications of these are. Well, thank you very much. To start with, the Supreme Court ruling, which says that status quo ante should be maintained, still subsists. And the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria does not have that power to vary or try to, uh, what you call, a, a middle course. The rule was very, very clear that total notes, parallel notes, other than other notes, should remain liberty in Nigeria. So what the president said yesterday, to my mind, is simply contempt of the Supreme Court ruling. I come to your question of comment of Governor Herufai and Chief Fani Kayode. It's just like when we are saying six and have a dozen. It means the same thing. <clears throat> what I'm telling Nigeria, of course, is that what is happening currently is not an ABC affair. It's not the decision of ABC governments, but rather decision of presidency, which is different from ABC. The governors that went to court to challenge that CBN decision are APC members. Let me say this. Cashless policy is a policy of the party and the government. And we agree with the entire abolition of the policy. But our issue is the timing and method being used in the implementation. 
to us, the timing is wrong. And the duration is equally not sufficient. Barrister Moyeli. Okay, I thought it's finished. Yes. Sorry, I, 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 I didn't want to interrupt you. I thought you had finished, but maybe you should finish and then I will ask the question. Yes, sir. Finally, what the government is doing or this is doing by inviting Chief Alika Oday for interview, they are only chasing the shadow. The signs are very clear. Nigerians are not happy with what they are experiencing currently. What Nigerians are experiencing, I better imagine it. Let me use myself as a case study. I have money in the, in the bank. I could not assess it. I'm begging for, for 500 naira, 1,000 naira, before I'm able to do anything. What we are saying in the nutshell is that the time is wrong. Thank you. Okay, Barista Moyeli, um, th some people suggest that uh, by not joining the central bank uh, to this case that was filed, that was probably not right. But you're a legal person, so you were able to en enlighten us on that. What would be your reaction? Well, that, that, that is true. Central bank, as far as I've gone down, and there's two parties. No doubt about that. But what is there is this. The governors that went to court deliberately left out CBN and CBN governor because of the time of their action. If CBN governor and CBN is joint, that the matter could be had at the federal court. But they want it to be matter between federal government and state governments, which only Supreme Court has original jurisdiction to hear. I must forget the fact that CBN Act gives presidents the power to regulate, to direct, to supervise activities of CBN and CBN governor. So when the president is joined, it is presumed that he's expected to give directive to CBN and CBN governor. And the president said yesterday that the matter is already in court and that it will be something this for him to jump into it. But the president was going to hold and court, I mean, out and court at the same time. The, the matter is in court. It is just something is, I already say that mm. toilet notes, odd notes, would be uh, a, a legal tender for, for 60 days. Why 1,500 notes would no longer be legal tender? It's time to vary the ruling of Supreme Court. So to my mind, yes, CBN and CBN governor ought to have been joined as necessary parties. Do you want to ask? But that president is there as a party. He is supposed to ask the CBN governor and CBN to stay action until the order is vacated by the Supreme Court. That's my opinion. That's the major question. This is a question for a yes or no answer, if it's possible. Uh, are you now telling us that at the end of the day, CBN is not independent? Because if they can be dictated to any time by the executive, I don't see any independence in it. Well, there is checks and balances in governors. There is no arm of government that is totally independent. CBN is a creation of the arts, and it has its own arts regulating its activities. But they are to be reporting to the president as the chief executive 
of the Federal Executive Council. So, because it's the appointing authority, the law that set up CBN gives him the right to give directive to the CBN governor. That's the act. Okay, but the same executive appoints, well, there's a fight now that the the appointment of the chief justice and all that. Yeah, that's should, national judicial. Uh, uh, yeah, it shouldn't. <laughs> but whoever appoints another person has the right. That's what it tells us. If whoever appoints someone to a place can just dictate to the but person. But Senate confirms. Uh, see? Uh, well, that's <laughs> okay, that's the implication. <laughs> okay, right no, now. No, I, no, he wants I, to react. I said two things. Yes. Yeah. I said president appoints the governor. Yeah. But that CBN has an act that stipulates its mode of operation. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. One of it, of course, is that for certain decisions, particularly currency redesigning, mm. CBN must inform the president and president must give a go ahead mm. because of its impact in, in so many things that makes up a nation. Okay, uh, well, there's an issue you raised that I really wanted to ask you about. Um, so many reasons that you said people are against this policy right now. One of them is the timing. Yes. One of them is the timing. What's really the issue about the timing? Yes. Because if people are going to suffer with a bad policy, they will suffer at any time. What is the main thing about this timing that is so wrong? Sorry, let me correct one impression. The policy is not bad. It's a very good policy. If the policy starts fully, Nigeria and Nigerians will be the better for it. You must, must first take that. Cashless policy will address a lot of uh, security breaches, a lot of criminalities. Now, but about timing is this. December period is always a period that everybody spends a lot of money. Christmas celebration, traveling, and what have you. Then January is a period that most parents pay their children's school fees. We spent in December for festive period. We are entering January, we are paying school fees and other uh, expenses. Now, which means there will naturally be scarce resources, which means people will just be struggling to make up for what they have spent in December in January. Workers must have collected their salary for December, and January will not come earlier than first week in February. So December, January is always a tough time for everybody in this country economically, but we are just recovering, we are just settling down. If you don't bring a policy that will take that will take money out of circulation this period in time, when naturally we normally struggle to make money in January, then it will compound our problem. That's why people are thinking that the timing is wrong, number one. Number two, the time is short. We should be given at least six months and that's the provision of the CBN Act. That if you want to resign Naira, it should be within six months. You and I know that December 5, 2022 was when the new Naira note was launched. Between December 5 and January 15 or thereabouts, the new notes were as scarce as anything you can think of, which means from December 5, we want to be having the new Naira note in abundance, but reverse is the case. As I speak, the new Naira note has still scarce. If you want to take away old notes, you must ensure that you have enough new notes and to argument. If you listen to that analysis, the number of new notes printed for short of the required new notes that's supposed to be printed. A lot of people are saying it's a deliberate policy by some elements to cause and 
security people preach in the nation. In that good intention, you know, money is it determines a lot of things in this country. And that we are not used to cashless policy for now. You must provide enough money. Take for instance, if I get to POS, or I get to my bank, I'm able to get 20,000 naira per day. Maybe the complaint will not be as much as this. I get to a bank, I get my 10,000 naira, you get your own, there will be complaint as much as this. But we couldn't assess our money, 2,000, 1,000. Some people stayed by the ATM for eight hours. They were only paid 2,000. And that is why people felt it's deliberate. Some saboteurs are involved. That's why we are saying, if you give us enough time, with time, everything will evolve. And we are just to the new reality. Okay, bye, star. I submit. <laughs> Thank you, very much. Barista. Uh, before you go, um, just just one last question. When 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 the politicians suggest that it's just a group of people who are trying to create chaos, yet it's the president who has made a public broadcast, who has provided an extension to at least one commonly used currency, which is the two hundred naira to remain for 60 days. Is there still a merit in the argument that it's just a cabal? Well, well, to my mind, what president ought not be addressing at all. Because our president cannot say that's so wrong and be very the order of the highest part of the land. The order is very simple. Old note should remain a legal tender until the was decided by the highest court in the land. What that's very important to do is to give CBN governor directive until the was directed. Old notes, new notes should be in circulation on the further notice. It's more honorable. Nobody loses anything if the two notes are in circulation. Nobody. I tell you, masses, poor masses, I feel it depend more, not the bourgeoisie, not the political class, not the capitalists. We masses are feeling it more. That's why people are believing as a deliberate policy to scuttle the democratic process we are embarking upon. But Barrister, wouldn't it be a better argument that the president should direct the uh, CBN or whoever is responsible to print enough notes that will go round rather than saying that the old notes must remain in circulation. What's the rationale behind that? Because if you have the new notes in, uh, very sufficient for everybody, mm -hmm. it would be a better thing. Wouldn't it also be a better argument for the people to talk to the, uh, those who are responsible for online banking to be seamless to sit up and upgrade their facilities to make sure that online banking is, is good enough. Because all the transactions, major transactions, a lot of people I know have made, paying school fees and all that, was done online. But the only problem is that it took too much time. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that be, those kind of arguments be better than saying old notes must be in circulation? Now, even if we are crying, people are also suspect that Maybe these old notes, especially in the denominations that can be hoarded somewhere, that is 500 and 1,000 Naira notes, they are suspect that, okay, maybe it really has been hoarded somewhere. And the president said something about national security and all that, and you have confirmed it as well, that it's going to be a good thing and it's already showing some signs. So why wouldn't we be arguing about something that would be a better uh, talking point rather than saying old notes must continue? Now, let me clear this. Online, online banking is elitist in nature. We must get that one right. It's elitist. We are, just, we, we are just trying to introduce it to our people now with this cashless policy. Uh, one governor in the north, Kano State governors told us that out of their own, I mean, local government in Kano states, maybe about 13 or so local governments have banks. Other local government, about 30 or so, are not having banks, are not having POS. Now, what we are saying here, of course, is this. 
the policy is good. But that if the issue you raised about president directing the CBN to print more new notes, yes, but we must know one thing. It's a process that will not be done overnight, that will not be done in a day, that will not be done in a week. Now, what, what now happens in one, two weeks, and it not to be printed. That's why people are saying that we have old notes that are live value, that do not need anything. Just push the old notes out to circulation. Not all, few ones. Okay. So okay. as to ameliorate the suffering of our people. Okay. All right. Uh, well, barrister, barrister would would like to thank you for would like to thank you for coming on the show. We, we wish that we had more time. Thank you. Yeah, but um, we're thank still going you. to engage you because I know that whether the policy is reversed today or not, there are still going to be issues that will come up. And we hope that you'll oblige us any time that we call you. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank, thank you very you. much. For me. Uh, that was uh, Barrister Okewoye uh, Omoyele. I hope I got that right. Omoyele. Omoyele. <laughs> okay. Uh, he was talking to us about the uh, Naira redesign and all the, uh, would I call it power play uh, <laughs> around it and all that. And well, he has given insight from his own perspective, and I do, I do hope that you learn something from there. But we don't have much time right now. We need to take a, a short break for the news. Uh, when we return, we are going to deal with other issues concerning the same topic that we've been talking about. Stay with us.